Hello, so before I get into today's subject, which is selling things, I wanted to update you on some of the projects that I've got going on. Now last video I said that you would get a mini print if you bought the art artist version of the book and I didn't finish it, I didn't have it finished at the time I recorded the video, but I have it finished now and here it is. So um, the layout is inspired by Alphonse Mucha who was a poster artist Art Deco style did some amazing poster work. Google that shit because his stuff is amazing. His his figures are really sensuous and beautiful, and his layouts are so detailed and you know it's just amazing stuff. And when you realize that he had to do this all by hand without the aid of computer or Illustrator, um, it's even much more. It's even that much more amazing. So you know I I couldn't do this shit by hand or even with a ruler. I needed Illustrator. Um, so I got the layout inspired by Mooka, and then I populated it with all this Asian imagery, which is definitely inspired by um, Japanese aesthetics, um, specifically Hokusai. You can see my interpretation of the Great Wave down here, and these are some Hokusai clouds. And uh, in this inner circle, well, this outer circle, there are um, Japanese family crests. I don't know whose crests they are, but there are three of the ones that I like to look at, so... <laughs> Uh, and then I've got Daruma's in the corner, and then I've got the love Daruma, which shows up in the comic every now and then, right in the center. So, if you purchase the artist edition, not only do you get a sketch from me, but you also get one of these cute little things. And I'm also working on my piece for the um, Death Star art show, where we mash up Star Wars and horror movies, and mine is inspired by Junji Ito, who is a horror mangaka, and this is... What I've got so far on my creepy Uzumaki. Uh, it's a little blue. Needs a little bit more pink and more red. Lots more red. So hopefully next time you see this, it's going to be more terrifying. Alright. So, back to what I wanted to talk about. Selling things, which is almost as difficult as pricing things, which I did a video on back a couple weeks ago, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around the pricing thing. I think I've got some good ideas, but I'm not quite ready to share that just yet. So, um, selling things. Selling things is a, is a skill that they don't teach you in art school. They just, well maybe they do now, but when I was going to college, University of Maryland, College Park, the art department did not teach me jack shit about selling my work. They taught me about design and composition and balance and harmony and color and light, but not how to sell my shit. So they didn't teach me how to price my shit. They didn't teach me how to sell my shit. Um, so I've had to, you know, learn by doing, basically, and learn by observing my friends. And so um, I wanted to give you some ideas about some of the things that I've seen work very well. Uh, for my friends who are awesome and who have been doing this longer than me. So, you know, learn from the best, take what works, and apply it to your own stuff. Um, what doesn't work, what absolutely does not work, is if you sit at your table, and, and this is about selling things at a convention, not about selling things online, because that's a different skill that I have to figure out entirely. So this is about selling things in person at a convention. And what absolutely does not work is if you sit at your table like this the entire time looking depressed or looking down at your stuff, or even worse, if you have your cell phone, if you're, you know, on your smartphone doing this shit, you know, you might as well stay at home because Nobody's going to want to bother you. You look like you're busy. You look like you're pissed. You look like you don't want to be there. So if you're sitting there doing this and you're wondering why you're not making any sales, well, it could be that, you know, nobody wants to bother you while you're texting. All right. So that is one thing that I know absolutely doesn't work. The rest of this is stuff that may work for you or may not work for you depending on your personality. So the first method, and I will name all of these methods after my friends and give them show links. Um... The first method is uh, the, the Dern JG sneak attack method, which is um, most like what I, it, it's similar to what I do. I'm learning a lot from Dern because we, we, sim, we tend to have similar styles in how we approach uh, the tabling situation. So he'll generally just sit back. He's not a hard seller. Um, 
you know, he sits at the table, he smiles at everybody as they come by, he says hi, he waves to people sometimes. And if, um, you know, he catches their eye, uh, they usually come by his table and look at his stuff. And, you know, if it's a funny joke, they'll laugh at it and he'll let them, you know, peruse his stuff and, and go through it and flip through his books. And, you know, if anybody has any questions, he's there to answer them. If they don't buy anything and as and they're turning to leave, as they turn, he will hand out his freebie stuff, which is a bookmark. And he has a really clever spiel that goes along with it that I forget because whenever he's doing his spiel, I'm usually talking to somebody else and I, and I haven't heard it before. Um, so he told it to me once and it was really clever and I wish I remembered it. But anyway, um, he doesn't put any of his free stuff out on the table. The free stuff is only for people who come and look at his stuff. So if you look at his things, and if you're not really sure about buying them and you step away, you'll get a bookmark from Dern. And um, he'll remind you that, you know, some of his stuff is online for purchase. If you want to see, you know, if you see anything you like, um, he does a comic, all that kind of good stuff. So he only gives out free stuff to those who actually stop by the table, which is, I think is a pretty brilliant idea. Also, um, there's nothing below $5 on his table which is a strategy that he had come up with um, at San Diego. And it's something that I've started to incorporate into my own tabling. Nothing under $5 because, um, you know, you may sell out of a lot of the pins, the $1 pins or stickers or, or stuff like that, but it's still a dollar. And, you know, it probably took you 50 cents to make that pin, which, as we talked about in the pricing thing, isn't really ideal. So... Um, you know, nothing less than five bucks because you want the sale to be worth it. And five bucks get, at least get you like a Coke and a drink somewhere, like a Coke and a sandwich or burger or something. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so those are things that I've picked up from Dern. Uh, the second method is the Ross Nover how you doing method. And it's not really the how you doing method, but um, what he does at a table and he'll stand the entire time. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, Depending on the situation, Dern will either stand or sit. Um, so, like, sometimes he'll he'll stand an entire convention, sometimes he'll sit down an entire convention. It just depends on where the table is. Uh, all right, so the Ross Nover, how you doing technique. Um, Ross will usually stand an entire convention, and as people pass by, no matter if they're looking at him or they're not looking at him, he'll say, hey, you like webcomics? And some people will stop and say, Yes, I do. I do like webcomics. And then Ross will reply, well, I do a webcomic. And he'll show them his stuff and point out his stuff. And, um, you know, they'll either laugh or they'll walk away or they'll think he's a nut job. But the theory behind that is, you know, if it's a very busy con, enough people will stop and say, yes, I like webcomics. And yes, I will check out your shit. That it makes it worth it. And if he just sat there and, you know, looked at people and was polite, um, they might have just passed him by. So, um, you know, it, it works if you're, if you can do it without being too terribly annoying or terribly aggressive. There's a tone to it. There's a, there's a, there's a way to say that like, hey, do you like webcomics? Without, without sounding like you're, you know, trying to jump down their throats. And Ross has that kind of tone that just works. Um, I've heard other people try to do something similar and it just, it's a turnoff. Like maybe their delivery is just slightly off or slightly too aggressive. But the way Ross manages to do it, it's very personable and um, he gets, you know, a couple five minute conversation with the person. Usually they end up picking up something. Like whether it's his $5 prints or maybe it's a button or maybe um, it's something else, a, a shirt. When he gets books done, they will probably buy a book. You fucking idiot, get your book done. Um, so yes, that method is, is great if you're, you're good at wheeling and dealing and talking to absolute strangers about absolutely whatever the hell they want to talk about. Um, the next method is the Michael Bracco, my shit is so amazing, you must stop by and look through it anyway. And Michael Bracco sells both t-shirts and his comics. He's a indie comic, uh, indie comicer in the Baltimore area, and he's a crafter, and he does his own shirts. Um, I am not wearing one right now, but if you've seen the Narwhal 
unicorn shirt that I wear sometimes or the super art fight shirt. He hand screens those bitches. And his setup is pretty unique. What he'll do is he'll take his table, push it back a little bit, and then put up a rack, a clothes rack, full of um, screened dresses and shirts that he's done. So that, you know, people go down an aisle, they say, hmm, a clothes rack, let me flip through that. And as soon as somebody stops by and starts flipping through the rack, Michael, Mikey will say, look, let me know if you need anything. Uh, I have various sizes. I have girl sizes. Um, you know, if people pick up his book and flip through it, he, he goes into his pitch, you know, this is my book. It's a children-friendly book. This is what it's about. But Mikey does his sales based on that personal interaction, that, like, five minutes getting to know the person like he'll ask that person questions about themselves you know what kind of stuff they're into if they're into sci-fi he'll tell them about their book about his book if they like art you know he'll show off his his shirts and things and you know mikey makes a lot of sale like it's ridiculous we'll go to a show where everyone is doing shit and he'll come back with like a stack of cash like mikey's a fucking genius and i wish i wish i could just I wish I had the time to just sit down and watch him work a convention because the man is a goddamn genius. But it's that personal interaction, it's that, that five minute connection with the person that really draws them in and say, hey, you know, I like this guy, I want to support what he does. He makes some great shit, you know, I need to, you know, I, I don't feel bad, you know, handing him like 25 bucks for a dress or like 40 bucks for, I, I forget what his prices are. Um, but he makes his sales based on that personal interaction. And um, he's one of the best I know at what he does. He's like, Wolverine, I'm the best at what I do. I'm the best at what I do. <laughs> yeah, so the Mikey Bracco, my shit is so awesome. Because people will stop by because his stuff is pretty awesome looking. And I wish I had the forethought to, to wear the shirt so you could see it. Yeah. Um... Uh, the final method I want to talk about can backfire, can backfire, but is the but it is the Phil Con, look at me, look at me, I am so fucking here, look at me method, and uh, I saw this demonstrated this past weekend at Intervention Con. Um, Phil Con, you could definitely hear Phil Con over the din of everybody else. He was so enthusiastic about his book, about being at the table that anybody who would walk by, he would be like. Hey, you, come over here. Look at my stuff. And, you know, he would tell it to absolutely everybody who passed by. You know, whether they were a vendor, whether they were an attendee, whether they were a staff member. Just in your face, just loving life, really enthusiastic. And the reason it works is because, you know, it is, it is very aggressive and it's very loud and it's very in your face. But his enthusiasm for comics just bleeds through in what he does. And if you like comics, and if you like fantasy comics, then you're going to want to pick up A Gilded Age. And that's that's the name of his book. Because, you know, you just can't help yourself. You, you see Phil Connie's jumping up and down. You're like, what the fuck is this guy on? And then you look at his stuff and this, oh my god, this is awesome. And he says, yeah, this is awesome. And you just want to buy it. Um, and it's that enthusiasm that's really, really infectious. Uh, you know, he'll sit there and, like, somebody's talking to one of his table mates and he's got the book and he's going, buy me, buy me, buy me. And if it was anyone else, you would want to punch them in the dick. But because it's Phil and because his enthusiasm is so genuine, you just, you can't help it. You just, you just got to buy the fucker. Um, I have seen this method backfire on people. I have seen people be shunned from a convention because of, you know, their aggressive... Uh, pitches at people walking by and I've seen it people actually walk away from sales because of you know the pitchman type deal so you know if if you feel that that is not your personality or not something that you're comfortable doing don't fucking do it you know that that's a that's some very delicate jutsu that you need to just you either have it or you don't um, so these are four solid methods for selling things at conventions that my friends have found much success with um, over the years. And, uh, you know, there's something to be taken from each method. Uh, you can learn from each method. You can try them out. Um, oh, another thing, just in general, standing up 
behind the table is better than sitting down at a table. Um, I don't know what the psychology is, but people tend to um, be more welcoming and, and more apt to ask you questions or to interact with you when they can see you face, you know, at eye level. You know, if you're talking to somebody really tall, they don't want to feel like they're, you know, staring down at you. So at least if you're at like nose or chest level, um, they can more easily have a conversation. And that's really what selling at a convention is all about. It's, it's that, that interaction, that five minute interaction. All of these methods, um, depend on some kind of interaction with the potential, um, the potential buyer. So um, standing is more conducive to these interactions than sitting. Uh, now if it's a long day you're gonna wanna you know pace yourself um, or you get one of those anti-fatigue mats. Those are fucking genius. They, they're great. But yeah in general standing helps you sell better than sitting does. So um, those are my friends ideas on how to sell. It works for them. Um, I'd love to hear any other ideas you have uh, if you're familiar with the convention circuit, if you table a certain way that doesn't sound like any of these and it's really successful for you, I would love to hear what you do um, unless you don't want to share, which is just, that's fine. I like sharing. Not everyone does. Um, so if you've got an awesome method for selling stuff at a convention, please let me know. Drop a comment in the, the field down there or on Twitter or on um, the comic page or anything like that. Um, and I'd love to hear from you. So uh, I'm going to stop now before you fall asleep, and I'll see you next time. Bye.